Welcome to the eighth Wandsworth Coronavirus Business Forum. It's a, an opportunity for businesses to have their say. Uh, we're doing something slightly different with the chat function today. Uh, we're encouraging people to put their contact details down. If you've got an offer to make, make that offer. If you have a question, please put it down, but um, we'd rather you ask that question in person. So we'll share the chat function uh, and you'll have your contact detail, details in there. Uh, for, for just following up with people that you've heard from. Uh, we've had some interesting uh, conversations from in, about insurance, etc. Uh, and uh, it might make it just easier for you to, to make that contact if we give you the details. So today really is uh, the theme is access to finance. And we're getting to that stage now where you either know whether you're going to get some help in the form of a grant, um, but you'll be coming to a crucial stage as to whether you can keep the business running until lockdown comes to an end for you. Uh, and so I think access to finance is, is timely again now. And we have uh, Kyron Burke from Swoop, who's going to be talking about uh, some of the, the finance schemes and how his company can help. And we have James Carden from Barclays Bank, who's been very helpful uh, previously and will update us on some of the practicalities of making those applications. But first we'll hear from uh, Jonathan Cook, the cabinet member for business at Wandsworth Council. And Jonathan will give us an update on, on the council strategy. And then uh, Graham Russell, the assistant resources director at Wandsworth Council, will give us uh, some of the details on the implementation and hopefully we'll find out a little bit more about the additional grant that's uh, been uh, approved by the government or the distribution of it and, and what the council's strategy will be and how their discretionary part will, uh, will affect businesses in Wandsworth. So um, with that really, I, I'm going to pass over to Jonathan. If you could unmute yourself, Jonathan, and just let us know what's happening uh, in Wandsworth. Thank you very much. Okay, Th thank you, Steve. Good, good morning, everyone. Th and thank you, Steve, for, for organising uh, again. Maybe if I can kick off by just giving a, a quick overview of what's changing uh, across the council, uh, and then and then focusing on on the developments on the on the business business side of life. Um, with the beginning of the easing of lockdown, we're we're starting to get those services and activities that we can back to somewhere near normal uh, so for example the um the big affordable housing program that, that we've got in the borough with lots of different sites all, all over the place uh they're beginning to uh become active again uh, it's obviously in the construction construction sector uh so that's very important um so you'll be seeing that right way across the borough um schools we're now approaching reopening there so that that has an impact on obviously so so many people and crucial business as well we've got working parent scenarios so um that's that's proceeding you know really at, at pace now um we've we've still got the hub um uh supporting residents who uh, who, who need any help that's been a, a great success gets lots of calls and and, and deal, deal with them very very quickly uh, we're getting into the routine of running council meetings virtually last night we had the second um planning committee meeting on a virtual basis and it, and it worked fine so uh certainly the machinery of the the council will continue on that basis for some time to come but we proved it can be done so that's uh, that's encouraging um on moving on to the business side of life i mean i'm certainly getting a lot more correspondence uh, from businesses and appreciate just how difficult things are i mean yeah, really really do understand that we're we're here to help in in any way that, that we can um Mr. Russell will be able to give an update on the, the grants program, which we've uh, talked about um, over the last few weeks. That's now reaching the point where it's, it's probably paid out uh, to the vast majority of those who are eligible. Um, over £48 million, just over 3,000 uh, eligible businesses there. Um, so that's reaching probably a sort of steady state, but Mr. Russell can maybe update us on the absolute latest. Um, I'm aware there's um, a lot of people have um, have seen the government's announcements about the discretionary grant fund, which is 
also something administered through through councils. Um, it's very targeted. It's much smaller than the schemes so far. It's about five percent uh, in terms of funding. We've yet to have that completely confirmed, but we think for ones that it's somewhere um, under three million pounds. Uh, and the suggestion is, although it's described as discretionary, the suggestion is that it, it should focus on four key areas. So uh, they are um, shared businesses and shared workspace, uh, market traders, um, b and uh, and charity properties. So we're just uh, waiting for final guidance on that. We're working through um, how we will set that scheme up, talking to other councils about how, how they're doing it. And we think it's probably quite important in London that we, we all do something pretty similar. And I think we will probably all end up um, fairly closely following the, those those four guideline uh, uh, groupings but uh, that will be confirmed very soon um, just a note on process as well um, we don't actually have a process in in places so because it's completely new whereas the previous grants used the uh, I think I mentioned last time uh, the previous grants used the business rate system we just push the money the other way through the system um, this one is completely new so obviously that, that just takes a little bit of time to get that up and running but I must emphasize um, that that's not going Going to be an answer to everyone's problems uh, I'm afraid um, it's 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 a pretty targeted scheme so yeah we, we've we've got to be realistic about about that um, so moving moving on to um, to other to other things I mean that that really is why we've mounted a, a pretty vigorous lobbying campaign um, while we've welcomed the uh, central government support I mean, it's, it's been huge and tremendous in so many ways um, in my letters to the Chancellor and the Business Secretary, and I'll be following up again uh, this week, um, we have argued for wider support uh, and very much uh, um, keeping the business community going right the way through this and coming out the other side, and that's that's got to be the focus. So, so the scheme I've just talked about, it's part of that, but it's, it's, it's not going to be enough. Um, we think our focus now needs to really shift to uh, near-term recovery as some businesses are starting to trade again. That's, that's tremendous to see. What can we do to support that at a practical level? Um, I think the bids have been doing an absolutely fantastic job. So obviously there's an information sharing role here. We'll do everything we can to facilitate that. Uh, and we're increasingly beginning to think about um, all of the training needs. Our work match program um, has been uh, has been very successful at placing people into, into new employment. Um, and we're thinking about the themes of economic recovery and what does the, as someone described it, business unusual yeah we, we're kind of now in a reset phase we're now moving into business unusual where it was certainly nowhere near normal and the normal will be different won't it we can all see that um what are going what are going to be the challenges so for example um with the announcement from transport for london that they think the the bus and tube network can probably only cope at about 20 percent of its original capacity uh we're working very hard to uh, to adapt um roads and public space to encourage uh walking and cycling and other means of getting around uh, because we can see that's all going to be very different in the future uh we think neighborhoods are going to be more important so hopefully that's good news for all of our local uh shopping precincts parades and, and town centers as they become a bigger part of people's lives so that's sort of the, all of those themes of economic recovery so we're, th we're thinking about a lot um talking to the bids we've already had some tremendous input and and welcome more but very conscious that the bids are focused on particular areas of the borough the large parts of the borough which, which aren't covered by bids so yeah we, we've, we've got to got to to work on that one other thing i should mention just sort of re rewinding um is We'll, we'll be writing also to, I think it's probably uh, the business secretary um, with particular concerns around um, the pub sector uh, in, in, the, in the borough and um, some of the challenges uh, they're facing. Um, and the general medical, I think Mark Saunders, I don't know if Mark's on the call today, but we had a very useful exchange following last week's meeting. Uh, we'll be picking up the, the themes there with, yeah, around um, general medical. So, dentists, physios uh, and, and similar businesses who are in a, in a very difficult position and haven't so far got any support so we'll be really pushing that as, as well. Um, shall I leave it there for time being? Very happy to take any any questions at whatever point um, but uh, I think it's my main message is, is, a, is a, a shift of shift of focus from where we were last week as, as businesses are beginning um, to, to reopen some of them at least.
Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, mm. Just one question for me. I probably know the answer, but uh, this discretionary grant is, is um, almost like the last lifeline for some businesses. Uh, is, is there a timeline that you can talk about? Yeah, I would hope by next week we will be able to, I mean, as I say, we're still waiting for a bit more information from central government, but I would hope that by, say, the end of next week, we will be able to make a, a definitive announcement about, okay, this is what the scheme looks like, um, and, um, yeah, and then people can react to that. Uh, thank, thank you for that. Uh, I, I guess, you know, one of the biggest um, concerns that businesses have mm. is that they don't have a voice, and yeah. we've had some heart-rendering cases yeah. Uh, yeah. put to us which we forwarded to you and yeah. you've taken up to, to government so thank you very much for that uh, I think it, it means an awful lot so with that could I move on to, to Graham Graham could you give us an update on the implementation process for the grant yep uh, can do some of it will uh, just build a little bit on what Councillor Cook just said so apologies if uh, we're repeating ourselves um, so the existing grant schemes was the small business grants and the retail hospitality and leisure uh, we've paid out 3,072 grants to the value of 48.24 million. Uh, we are still processing claims, but they're obviously coming in at a much slower rate uh, than previously. Uh, again, if you know of anybody or if yourselves you haven't applied, uh, read the eligibility criteria. If you think you're eligible, get in touch and uh, we'll process a grant for you if, if you are eligible. Um, so the new discretionary scheme, uh, lots of... Uh, interest in this obviously. Um, I think Councillor Cook has hit the nail on the head um, with some of the problems that he's identified, most notably the fact that uh, uh, it's a very small amount of money in comparison to um, the uh, existing grant schemes and the numbers of businesses who are going to be seeking assistance um, is likely to be very high. Um, so we still don't know precisely how much uh, we're going to get. We have been discussing the scheme and the difficulties of actually um, picking which priorities to go for. And even within that, um, just if, uh, as an example of, of the kind of difficulty we're having, um, if we set a grant at a specific level, um, we don't know how many businesses will actually be eligible because we, we, we haven't got the, we don't hold data on particularly the, uh, um, businesses operating in um, shared spaces. We don't know how many may be eligible. So if we say it's, let's say for the sake of argument, £5,000 and 5,000 businesses uh, turn out to be eligible, we've got a problem. Um, we, we've thought about the possibility of basically first come, first serve, which um, sort of solves the problem in one sense, but uh, if, you're the, if you're the first one to apply after his money's run out, it doesn't solve any problems. Alternatively, we can set a time period for applications, uh, and then we can divide the number of eligible businesses by the amount of money we've got. Well, that might actually mean that everyone gets something that's so small, it doesn't really help. So these are the kinds of practical problems that we're, we're facing in this. And as Councillor Cook said, we're talking to lots of other councils uh, in London and across the country, and they're all experiencing exactly the same kind of difficulties. Um, we, we do intend um, to make the process as simple as possible when we have finalised it. So it'll be an online application form. Um, we obviously can't write to people because you don't know who, who the uh, potentially eligible business will be. We're trying to minimise the amount of information that we ask businesses for. Um, if you read the guidance, um, one of the requirements the government's put in is to prove that you've been affected by COVID-19. Now, the traditional business way of doing that will be to look at your management accounts and last year's and compare the two, and we haven't got time to do that. Uh, many small businesses probably haven't got time to prepare that information. So we're just looking at the best way we can to minimise the burden on uh, businesses and ourselves in, in terms of um, um, running that scheme. So... We would hope, as Councillor Cook says, to have much firmer ideas middle of next week, I think. Uh, and obviously we will get that publicity out to people as soon as we can on how we're actually going to run the scheme. Um, I'm sorry I can't be a bit more definite on that, but uh, it, it's a very, very difficult um, scheme to, uh, to build. The last thing I'd say, uh, just as a general reminder, um, and you may already know that parking enforcement is recommencing in the borough uh -huh. from next week. Um, that's from Monday. Obviously, Monday's a bank holiday, but it'll be normal enforcement from then on. Thank you. 
Graham, did you have to bring that into it? Parking, honestly. Uh, now, Graham, um, one question uh, that's on my mind is, okay, so there's 18% of businesses who haven't um, applied for the initial funding. Mm -hmm. You paid out 82%? Right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, the, the difficulty with that is that the uh, original figure of eligible business was an estimate on our part. We don't have complete records up to date. You know, some of those businesses will have moved on, closed down, changed owners and so on and so forth. So um, whilst it's 82% of that figure, that, fig that our sort of baseline figure may well be over or understated. So, but do you have a list of, of those businesses uh, that you can't get in, in contact with? Yeah, we've, we've uh, attempted to telephone every single one of the ones that hasn't applied and we've left messages um, and you know, we got quite a good response rate out of that when we first did it, but th there's a limit to what we can do in terms of the, uh, um, the amount of resource we have to, to do that kind of thing. Okay. It'd just be, I know there's GDPR, but it'd be nice to know if that list could be published or shared, um, just so that we, we can try and help, but I presume it, it can't be. I'm not sure it could be, no, unfortunately, because okay. we don't have, we don't have consent to pass it on. So, but right. so we have, we have done a level best to contact every single one who, that we thought would be eligible who hasn't applied okay I, I guess the only option there the message for businesses is if you if you haven't received a, a grant and you think you might if your business has been shut it might be worth a visit just to check on the post if you haven't already done that absolutely so some letters have been found uh, lying in in uh, letter boxes um, okay, thank you very much, yeah. Graham. Well, one thing, Steve, there's no time limit on the on those schemes at the moment. We're not time limiting them. They're, they're, they remain open. All right, that's, that's good news too. Um, okay, so uh, I'm going to introduce uh, Kieran Burke from Swoop in just a moment. But uh, in, well, in fact, Arrestes uh, from Business Doctors uh, is going to introduce Kieran because Business Doctors have uh, developed a partnership approach with Swoop and Access to Finance. Arrestes, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Stephen, uh, and good morning to everyone. Uh, uh, I just wanted just to briefly say that I'm really delighted that as business daughter on national level, we have set up this, uh, this partnership uh, with uh, Swoop.com. Um, actually, from C bills to any kind of loan, it really makes uh, it easier and takes away a lot of anxiety and uh, and hope hopefully it can help also to give more confidence to businesses uh, uh, as as you say as the lockdown uh, measures are gradually uh, um, gradually fading will gradually fade and I think this having this kind of confidence having you know this kind of spark in in in, in the dark uh, is something that really can help. Uh, Swoop is really interesting from my point of view because uh, I give a uh, market comparisons across all lenders. Uh, you, you can think about like uh, a sort of money supermarket or confused.com for businesses. I found it really amazing to use. All financial data are automated. Uh, it can be feeding into your account software and overall, very importantly, they have advisor that can speak directly with you. And uh, so they can deal with your anxiety. They can take away that uh, heavy lifting and help you to make sure that your proposition is bankable. Uh, let alone, and I think this is very important, you, you do not pay for the service because uh, they get a fee from the lender. So it's really a no brainer in my view. Um, as business doctors uh, is a natural partnership. Why? Because uh, it's a great fit because we have a collective expertise with Swoop in terms of uh, also sectors that have been highly impacted by the coronavirus uh, crisis, like hospitality and leisure, for instance, are an important part of, uh, of any uh, board of business. And, uh, and we can help also in terms of uh, uh, creating the best business strategic plans to, to help our common clients to bounce back uh, from this crisis. So, so really, without no further ado, I'm really delighted to introduce uh, to you Kieran uh, Burke, that is the Chief Operating Officer and the co-founder of Swoop. Uh, and, and Kieran, uh, over to you, thanks. Thanks very much, Orestes, um, and thanks, Steve. Um, very nice to meet you all this afternoon. 
Um, I'll give you a quick overview on swoopfunding.com and if you have any questions, please free, feel free to pop them in the box or email me directly afterwards. Um, I'm Kieran at swoopfunding.com. Um, so as Orestes uh, alluded to, what we've done is we've created a platform to help uh, small business owners and sole traders when it comes to access to finance, um, but also understanding some key financial metrics that lenders would use to evaluate your business against. Uh, so you can feel uh, a bit more assured as to when you're in a good position, just go for certain products um, and, and, and services. Um, so I suppose that the first step with, with Swoop is, is, is going to swoopfunding.com uh, and the way we've set the, the website up is that you can either manually in, input your information or use integrations, so integrations into your accountancy software or your bank account. Uh, we support all major banks and accountancy software and then with that we start to uh, give you information around your kind of performance metrics, but also importantly connect you into products and services that should be able to help your businesses. Um, and obviously most pertinent now is running eligibility checks against those uh, big headline COVID related solutions. Um, so they, so that's obviously the most relevant ones probably for the most people on this call will be uh, the bounce, bounce back loan scheme, uh, the C-Bills coronavirus business intervention loan scheme, um, and as of today, the, the future fund scheme. Um, so essentially what we're able to do is give you a quick sense of eligibility as to which C-Bills or which bounce back loan scheme is eligible and, and right for you. And as Oresti says, we have uh, advisors there that are able to walk you through the process. Um, with C-Bills, it's, it's a bit more involved in terms of you, you'll need heavier documentation than you would with the bounce back loan scheme, which is a lot about self declaration and filling in an online form, uh, which is why we've, we've partnered with business doctors when it comes to helping businesses, particularly when it comes to reforecasting. Re so forecasting is a big uh, requirement when going for any of the C-bills uh, loan scheme. Uh, one of the things as well, what we can do to you is, it, is, is start to give you an insight into the types of lenders that are, are, are being active and, and the timelines involved. Um, so you'll appreciate with uh, a lot of the, the big banks um, have had to have operational changes in, in, impacted on them because of the need to get C-bills and bounce back loan schemes out as quickly as possible. So therefore, uh, it can be a, a long a process which as a, as a young business or a small business can be in, incredibly frustrating and given that timelines. So what we're trying to do is give businesses an, an assessment of if you are going to go, with a, if we're going to connect you into a certain bank to let you know what the time timelines are involved. Um, we're also kind of updating people as we go on new lenders that are coming onto the, onto the scheme. So you, you'll be aware that some of uh, the wholesale or alternative lender market has started to come into the C-bill area. So you'll have the likes of um, Funding Circle are now kind of up and running effectively as of uh, the, the, the last three weeks. And um, SueFunding.com actually has the highest approval rating uh, of, of loans that have gone out the door through through Funding Circle. Um, we have um, Capital on Tap uh, coming coming onto that C-Bills network now. Um, but we also have new bounce back uh, loan uh, uh, coming on in the likes of Tide and Starling. Uh, one of the kind of common uh, challenges initially were for those businesses that were using a challenger bank or a non-CMA bank or a high street bank uh, and being able to help them through uh, the bounce back loan process when, when it first launched. Um, fortunately, HSBC uh, was able to, to set up uh, businesses that were uh, didn't have a bank but a kind of a non-CMA or a, a big bank within the UK and can set up a temporary account to, to put the, the cash into. Um, and then uh, as of today, um, for those of you who aren't familiar, there is the, the future fund scheme, which is where the government is putting a further 250 million into the, into the market, which is match funded against investors in a convertible loan note. The convertible loan note um, is from 125,000 pounds up to 5 million. And it lasts for a 36 month period. It has a, a non-compounding interest rate of 8% per year. Um, and that convertible loan note converts into equity of 20% at the end of the period, 
or else you pay back 100% of, of, of the loan it, 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 it itself. Um, however, what we've done is we've put all the details of the all the new products on, on our website, uh, on the blog side of things, but also if you run through, you'll go, go against the eligibility criteria too. Um, outside of say the, the kind of key main uh, COVID solutions that are coming on to the, to the UK market, what we also tend to do is look at other solutions that can help to help businesses during this time. One of the ones is also looking at uh, savings where there's potential savings in the market. Um, we've had quite a mild winter. And um, so what that means is you, what we're actually doing for a lot of businesses is we're, is we're getting a couple of thousand pounds back on energy related bills. So being able to upload your energy uh, bills into Swoop, we can come back within 24 hours to give you a potential quote on what we can do in terms of saving you, you cash by moving your, your energy provider. And um, for those businesses that have exposure on FX and are using their bank to do any FX related charges, we can move you into a much more preferential setup. So again, you, you can save along a lot in FX and, and in, in, in hedging. Um, and then for those businesses that for whatever reason fall outside of the COVID-19 related funding, uh, we also have a number of products that we'll be able to, to assess you against, uh, principally um, a lot around uh, selective invoice finance or invoice financing. So for those uh, of you of businesses who have, who have income against outstanding debtors or significant debtors there, there's potential there to lock on it. For those of you who are in the e-commerce space, uh, there are facilities there that are able to look at your traffic and, and your sales and be able to provide solutions against that. And then there's the typic, typical um, investment market uh, where you've got equity fund angel investors uh, that are still looking at, at, at opportunities. And then finally, uh, the grants market itself. So being tapping into any kind of open up challenges around, so say that say Nesta that might be running or Innovate UK uh, that might be eligible uh, for your business based on on sector or location, and um, that are always worth 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 going for. There's a Innovate UK Smart Grant that's closing on May 26th that has quite a, a lot of open eligibility around it. So always always worthwhile uh, taking in and, and being aware of these these forms of finance uh, alongside the COVID related related solutions and any alternative ones. Um, yeah, but as I say, the, the, the main purpose of what we're trying to do is is it connect you into the financial ecosystem as quickly as possible, ideally through uh, integrating or adding your documents in so that our advisors can give you a, a quick assessment as to your options, walk you through them, uh, give you a sense of comfort of, of what is available and when, when it can be available to you uh, and kind of taking it from, from, from there. Um, but as I said, uh, please uh, follow on with any questions or, or pop any questions into the box. Very happy to answer and help out. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kieran. That's um, it's really interesting to know. So um, quite a broad spectrum. One question that I, I have for you, um, and it, it's obviously hugely important to businesses at this current time, uh, how are you finding the rates that are being offered, especially on unsecured loans? Yeah. So for for this C bills, what we're seeing is two to seven percent from the banks. Uh, from the non banks, we're seeing kind of three to nine percent uh, as as the kind of rates. Uh, what we're seeing outside of say non um, C bills related rates, uh, we're seeing more kind of in the eight to twenty four space. I would say. Okay, that's really interesting because. Um... I suppose that's where Swoop comes into its own in being able to match um, lending to some of the best rates for businesses. Yes. Um, and and uh, what, yeah, and what's good is, is, is trying to, to find out what, what particular product is best suited to your business, because if, if it's maybe just focusing on, uh, a selective invoice facility, then, then, then using that, you can kind of manage it so it's not a kind of a chunky long-term facility with a very expensive rate. So it's, it's, it's about kind of blending it and understanding uh, the particular business and kind of where, where they're at uh, to be able to kind of keep, keep the cost down. 
Um, and then, and another thing I think what is what is is good to note I suppose is particularly with the C bills is say you were to get um, an alternative lender maybe on the seven or eight or nine percent side of things on that rates you still have that twelve months period interest free. So what you should be doing, uh, whether you're getting it through Swoop or through anything like that, is, is putting a checkpoint in six months into that facility to see if you can refinance back with your bank or to, to, to get that, that, that rate lower, lower again. Um, and similarly, uh, for those that aren't familiar with, with the time periods involved in moving your C-bills to bounce back or bounce back to C-bills, you have until November to, to make that that transition again that should be able to give you flexibility in terms of, of, of managing rates a little bit better. Lovely, thank you very much for that. Um, I, I'm going to introduce James Carden in a minute but after James I'll probably ask Zaib uh, Chawla um, for his opinion on when uh, a business should consider a loan uh, bearing in mind that you know Businesses put their life and soul into um, their businesses, and this this coronavirus is absolutely no fault of their own, and they have to make a decision. You know, do I persist and continue, or or do I wind up? So, I'd really like uh, an opinion from Zaib, uh, who is an accountant and has been advising uh, businesses. Just a just a gut feeling, Zaib. But for now, can I uh, move to James Carden from Barclays Bank? James, it's nice to have you back. Um, over to you, Steve. Thank you. Thank you for the uh, thank you for the invitation to come back. Firstly, um, I always seem to be playing the um, the bridesmaid on these calls and never the bride. So I'm I'm, I'm following in uh, very knowledgeable Kieran. So thank you, uh, thank you, Kieran, for covering probably a lot of what I was going to say. Um, I guess to give you, um, I thought I'd I'd kick off with. I guess, given the bank's um, um, interpretation of where we currently are, certainly with the bounce back loan product. So when I first came onto the um, call a couple of weeks ago, we just heard about the bounce back loan scheme. Um, the update I'm reading to, as of yesterday, lunchtime, this is that uh, certainly the bank has processed what over 100,000, 113,000 applications uh, totaling 3.5 billion and we've drawn 100,000 of those totaling just over 3 billion. So um, I know that compares um, kind of consistently with, regardless of who you bank with, that compares quite consistently with other lenders out there. Um, I guess from a Barclays perspective, um, I'm not making this call about Barclays. We've drawn um, 27, around 27% of the bounce back loan product compared to our market share of around 20, 21%. So um, having said that, I think um, I would take as fantastic as it's been. I completely appreciate there are, um, and not just with Barclays, across many of the banks where we haven't been able to help customers as quickly as we would have liked. Um, there are ongoing system enhancements more or less every single day. Um, and I know Barclays and certainly all the banks are working very hard to, uh, to, to move those through. Um, I'd say since the launch of the Bounce Back Loan Scheme, I think the number of Sybils um, have probably decreased, it's fair to say. Um, with a lot of customers choosing the bounce back loan scheme. Um, I think Barclays, like a lot of the banks, um, we've been able to roll out a, um, a fully digital journey for the bounce back loan scheme. Um, and that's meant for a lot of customers, albeit not every single customer I accept, um, the digital journey at, um, action through the online banking portal. Uh, but as I've just said, it, it's, it's, it's enabled uh, what, um, just short of 100,000 um, individual applications that we've um, thankfully been able to provide customers with finance for. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't want to, I'm, I'm going to be repeating a lot of what Kieran said, if I'm, if I'm completely honest. Um, uh, I guess from a bank, from Barclays perspective, fully recognise we have got lots more to do. Um, and believe me, there are kind of hundreds, if not thousands of people working every day as they are across the industry to to get to get funding out to uh, more and more people. Um, 
so yes, yeah, Steve, I think um, very quick update for me. I'm happy to, obviously, like last time, I'm happy to take any other questions. Uh, but in terms of the key updates, um, it has been focused on the bounce back loan scheme. And um, I guess we continue to make pro progress, uh, but we've got a lot more to do. Thanks, James. Um, are there any major sticking points that are coming up in applications that you're finding that are reoccurring over and over again? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, it's a really good point. I think um, you only have to Google um, some of the stories that I've, have, have been in the media in the last couple of weeks. Um, I think one of the biggest sticking points, certainly for Barclays, and I know a lot of the other banks, has been um, our, our KYC checks and requirements. Um, so KYC, know your customer. Um, where we are ultimately um, putting taxpayers' money at stake, let's be honest, um, we have had to um, take a real belt and braces approach to, um, to what we are able to demonstrate to uh, the government and ultimately the taxpayer via the guarantee. Um, and in a lot of cases, um, a, a number of the delays have been have been held up due to um, due to either inaccurate or out of date or um, um, slightly erroneous um, KYC KYC information that we that we hold and potentially doesn't match with uh, the correct information. Um, as I said, as certainly I can't speak for the banks. We've we've been able to draw just under hundred thousand loans, so um, this isn't impacting everybody. Far from it, but I know um, unfortunately where it is impacting people, and we aren't able to get through the volume. Uh, um, the impacts for those individual customers are um, are severe because they until it's re until it's remediated, we aren't legally allowed to lend the money. So, in terms of the sticking points, Steve, that's probably what I'm living and breathing every day with my team in terms of trying to trying to remove those blockers. Lovely, thank you very much, James. Uh, so now I'm going to uh, hand over to Zaib. Zaib, uh, so we've heard from Kieran that uh, the Sybil type schemes, interest rates are varying from two to nine percent, and um, then on outside the scheme from eight to twenty four percent. These are huge costs for businesses. Um, what and you've been Lanup have been very helpful in in helping businesses uh, through these forums to just think about um, you know their, their strategy is there any general general advice you can give us to you know when a business should um, commit to a loan um, yes Steve um, thanks uh, for this um, we're seeing all of our clients or even the um, new inquiries we're receiving everybody is seem to be just applying for the loans even though they've uh, had um, uh, cash reserves in their savings accounts as well um, look, loan is a loan, is an additional liability you will have to pay back uh, and it comes with a cost as well. Um, I know um, bounce back loan scheme in particular is um, quite uh, cheap. Um, the first year is also there is no repayment and the government pays for the interest, but in fact, it is a loan. And um, before I could hear from other advisors, um, not on particularly this form, but across the um, across the accountancy world as well, everybody was saying you should apply for the loan, especially bounce back loan scheme. And if you need to return it, you could do it in future. Um, um, look, the bounce back loan scheme is open till 4th of November. I have been asking my clients to um, really only apply for it if they need it. Also for the reason, look, the holiday period was granted for the mortgage payments. And as of yesterday, we've been seeing an update that that will affect future affordability criteria for the people who've availed uh, this opportunity and uh, have um, applied for the um, holiday period. So there is still, we're learning about these things as the time passes. Um, I will be, uh, as I've told all of our clients and I've been advising everybody that please only apply for the loan if you really need it because the scheme is open 
uh, till November. But you can utilize this time. We've seen uh, we've seen two sort of clients. One just being very traditional and haven't availed the opportunity to move to digital platforms like um, uh, cloud-based uh, bookkeeping softwares. There are so many available from zero QuickBooks free agents to so many. So this is a perfect time for um, um, for these businesses to move on to these digital platforms. Uh, we've seen um, we're looking after more than thousand um, uh, clients. We couldn't. Uh, we couldn't provide management accounts or annual accounts for all of them if within a month. We're limited by the human resources. Uh, but what it really helped was everybody who was already on the digital platforms and um, uh, bookkeeping softwares, they were able to extract this information fairly quite easily. Uh, so this, there is a lesson to be learned um, that all the uh, directors or uh, people looking after their um, uh, companies businesses they should get more involved into their financial into their financials and um, should start paying attention in moving their records to digital platforms thank you yeah that's uh, that's, that's very helpful um, before I open up the question and answer session is there anyone on the panel that uh, would like to make a, a last comment uh, on anything that's been set up to date? Yeah, if I can, uh, uh, Steve. Yeah. Yeah, no, just, I, I endorse what Zaid is saying. Uh, it's definitely important to understand if, uh, uh, what you need a loan for, right? And uh, the best possible advice that I would, I would, I would, say, I would simply say is that, uh, one has to have a clear view of what is the possible return on the investment uh, of uh, the use of the funds that you receive in the in the case of the of the bounce back loan and and very simply the best way is i think is to have two uh, to uh, let's say two visions and two business plan one it is probably to manage uh, 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 the period uh, of the next six months six seven months to try to understand uh, and we saw it we reviewed this in the previous seminars right uh, how you have stabilized your business at which level you need to uh, buy whatever you need to buy what are the level the level of sales uh, that is affordable in that period how is ramping up and what is this, the cash flow that you that you can have and then a second more strategic plan that will be the one probably necessary from January or February 2021 that is looking a little bit for that is more forward looking for the next two or three years. Uh, if this is done certainly can can give a little bit of help in understanding if it's worth uh, uh, taking a loan or not. Thank you very much Orestes. Steve can I just make a comment? Please Martin yeah. Yeah can all I would say to all directors is just when you're taking a loan please read the documentation and just make sure you're not personally guaranteeing it. That's, you know, when you want to take a loan, but please check whether you, you personally guaranteed it. Because I'm just giving an example. All funding circle loans, I don't know if they, um, I have seen prior to COVID, were personally guaranteed. And the amount of people, or amount of directors, I should say, who do not realize they have signed a personal guarantee it's phenomenal so what i'm saying to everyone is take the loans if you need them the bounce back loan i believe is completely unsecured but just make sure whatever you're taking if you're signing a lease agreement whether you've got a personal guarantee on it Brilliant. Don't, Thank you know, you. that is a time to actually either talk to me or as i hear before you take the loan to make sure that if it's personally guaranteed you really are able to repay it because otherwise they will look to you for the money in the future, the finance companies or banks. Uh, that's that's really uh, useful to know, Martin. Thanks for bringing up that point, Kieran. Uh, James, uh, before we go into the uh, the Q and A, a couple of points there that, that have been made. Really, uh, Zaib uh, talked about early repayment. Are you experiencing any clauses that prevent early repayment without penalties? Uh, and any comment on the personal guarantee? Kieran. Um, yeah, so with, with C-bills and bounce back loans, uh, there is no early repayment fees. Um, same for the future fund. Um, with um, bounce back loans, as, as Martin rightly said, there isn't a personal guarantee. Uh, with C-bills, uh, it's after 250,000 pounds that the personal guarantee is required. 
below 250,000 pounds, the personal guarantee is not required. That's really useful. James, any, any comments? No, Kieran's, Kieran's, Kieran's took, taken the words out of my mouth. Absolutely. Spot on. That's, that's really helpful. Okay, um, we're going to open up the question answer session. You should have the facility to uh, hit a button on your screen on the participants uh, to raise your hand. I see Mark Justin's got his hand raised, so I'm going to unmute Mark. Mark, what's your question? Hello there. Um, my question is that as we start now, um, thankfully, to think about reopening and getting going, um, being a restaurant that specialises in weddings and events, I want to know when the registry office is going to open, not, not to actually perform weddings, because I appreciate there are difficulties there, but what I really want is for someone, my existing weddings who have cancelled this year, quite understandably, but also the, the new ones, there's no one there. All they want is a date. Now, I know that um, eligibility be, checks have to be made, but if you could have someone with a paper diary just taking, you know, the 21st of July, 2021, one o'clock, that would put in a position where they could book their wedding and they could book me. But without anyone answering the phone in the registry office, that's not going to happen. So you're going to delay my my reopening or into the into the following year and you could cripple next year by not opening the registry office to take new bookings yeah jonathan is that something you can comment on yeah it's a good question i don't know the answer uh, i haven't come across that before i'll, I'll find out and and um okay, i mean I'm, i mentioned it oh, yeah. in, in for two months you've opened parking you know that's the main yeah. one that's yeah. the mm. open parking get parking fully manned yeah. on the phone how about opening up something that's a bit more useful like the registry office <laughs> I mean, you have a public yeah. perception, you know, of Wandsworth Town Hall. If, if I've, I do go there frequently to mm. take the brides and collect them, but you've got a public perception that all there is inside the town hall is a giant cash register marked parking. Mm. Oh, I, can, I can assure you it's a lot more than that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's a very good, well, are a very there good any question. departments open in the town hall apart from parking? Well, well, yeah, well, we're following a basic principle as all organizations are that if people can work from home then they should and the vast majority of people are are working at home um so uh, funnily enough i was in the town hall yesterday very briefly for, for the first time in weeks uh, and it's very very quiet um so i mean the, going back to the you know to, to take be able to take bookings not not perform weddings but to take bookings there must be someone there because you're the same department is uh, you know, births, marriages, and deaths. Yeah. So no, the no, deaths absolutely. are being registered. Yeah. So there is someone there. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I will certainly find out the answer to the question. Um, but uh, I think most of the council officers uh, in that department will, will be working remotely. So they yeah. may not be. But then, see, working remotely out. for this particular issue does involve a pen and a diary. You know, that's that's it. I know that the, there must be very important computer checks on the eligib eligibility yeah. of the uh, couples, mm. but all they want right now for a wedding uh, yeah. 12 months away is a, is a date and a time, and they'll be happy, and yeah. you can fill in and tick the boxes nearer the time, but, yeah. they, but they can't even get through, you know, it's, it's just a recorded message. Yeah, okay, I'll find out. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, you raise a really important point, Mark. There are lots of um, opportunities in the supply chain and I guess these will be addressed in the recovery plan that the council's drawing up. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really good, good of you to raise that. Thank you very much. Um, Pravin Patini from Minar Jewelers. Um, you've got your hand up. I'm just about to unmute you. Pravin, what's your question? Yeah, thank you, um, Steve. I, I, um, I just wanted to uh, get some advice from either James or uh, Zaib. Uh, I'm, uh, I've applied for the Sable loan because as soon as we open, we are likely to find that we'll need uh, to uh, stock up. And um, I have received the documentation from the uh, bank. Uh, and uh, 10 years ago, I'd applied for a loan, which uh, at that time, the bank base rate was around 0.5%. Uh, and uh, the um, bank uh, lent the money at 2.75%. Um, uh, interest rate. This time, the bank base rate is 0.1%. And uh, for the loan that I've asked, they are asking for 3.49%. Uh, 
So can I take, and, and from, the, uh, from the points of accounts, we believe that we've got a reasonably strong balance sheet and there, there's no reason why a good bank would uh, not consider us for our loan. So can I take in your opinion on whether or not there is a, a competitive rate, uh, Kevin or James, who can throw some light on it, please? Or should I negotiate for better? Uh, I'll, I'll jump in first. Yep. I, I think, I, 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 I'm not correctly if I'm wrong, but 3.49% seems quite specific. So. I, I don't know if it is HSBC, but HSBC are very, have published specific rates that they will lend between 3.49%, I think it's 3.99%. So if that is the case, then that is very much at the lower end of, of what they will be offering. So uh, if, it, if it happens to be HSBC, then I would say that is one of their most competitive rates that, that they will put out there. Um, and uh, from what we have seen in terms of offers gone out the door, uh, I would consider that a competitive uh, rate, um, but be really good to hear what James's take is on it. Um, but I know parties definitely go lower than, than that. Yeah, thanks, Kieran. Um, yeah, I'd, um, I'd agree. Yeah, it's a competitive rate. We are we are, we are falling in the band between two and a half and five percent. Um, I think um, a large part of our pricing is 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 driven on um, what we deem your customer grading. So with Barclays, um, that's generally a historic view of how you've managed the account, the credit turnover, um, typical behavior on the account. Um, so um, pricing pricing is, is a very complicated matter. It's probably an, an answer you'd expect someone that works for a bank to say. Um, it, isn't, it isn't simply a reflective of um, the current um, kind of base rate market conditions at the time um so um in an, in direct answer to your question um yeah i would agree with it's it, it's it's a competitive rate um certainly with barclays um the rate the rate is um there isn't room for negotiation if i'm if i'm being absolute candid with barclays the rate is what it is um and um and yes, yeah, so certainly for Barclays, um, if you can negotiate with your bank, then absolutely, I would um, I would always encourage you to do so. So I, I, I just want to understand, you know, earlier Kieran mentioned uh, the rates of 2 to 7%. So where does the 2% fit in? So I, again, uh, alluding to what, what James was saying there, it, it will depend obviously on, on the nature of your business, uh, how long, you have been operational for, um, how much you're looking for, how much debt you're able to, to service, uh, what percentage of the loan is 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 the value of say your your wage bill. So all, all those, those considerations are, are what's what's coming into into play. Um, but similar to what James has echoed, we haven't seen much uh, flexibility in in negotiation on rates purely because it's taking quite a long time to, to get to that decision. Um, and it, it, there isn't a huge appetite um, uh, for kind of a, a long report, what, what we're finding at, at, at the moment. But the, the considerations will, will definitely be down to, to uh, the, the kind of classic financial performance metrics of uh, your ability to, 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 to service, service the loan. Yeah, so uh, Kiran, I, I believe that as a business, we, we've never um, made a loss in our accounts and we've been with HSBC since uh, like 1998, so it's about 22 years now. And there, we've got an excellent track record and that's why I thought that the rate which they are offering isn't as competitive as I would have liked. Um, so I'm, I was wondering, yeah. uh, you know, whether or not to ask for a better rate. I know what yeah, the idea so, so, what um, James yeah. is. But uh, we have been one of the, the, what believe one of the very sound, we've never had a bank calling us for that you're overdrawn or your account is known up today. So they know that. Yeah. And that's why I think, uh, I believe that there is a possibility for me to negotiate and I just want to take your expert opinion. Yes, yeah, so, so that, I mean, I didn't obviously know it was HSBC, but when you said 3, 4, 3 3.49, I then assumed it was HSBC because- It is, yes. Yeah, so, the reason I, I made that assumption was because uh, I need to double tax it on home me 100% accountable for it, but I think 3.49 is HSBC's lowest possible rate that they can okay. give you. So you are getting the best rate from, from that. So you, 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 may, you may want to, to, to make the decision that you may want to, to 
to look elsewhere. But I think from a HSB for HSBC perspective, that is uh, the best possible rate that you can get for them on a, on a series. Right. Okay, that, that clears it. Thank you very much for that, Kieran and uh, no James, for your advice. Yeah. Thank you, Brav. And uh, Ravi Shand, uh, we have a, your hands raised. You have a question. Yes, uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to ask a question this morning. Uh, my question is, uh, because I'm in a indoor market, shooting market, um, uh, as I heard, uh, the grant going to be released, uh, discretionary grant going to be released next week. And because we've been heard, uh, li hearing a lot going on around uh, every week, every week, and uh, the market owner is trying to charge us a rent soon, and we are out of finance. The bills is all the bills been piled up, and we are out of finance. We are struggling in our lifestyle, and it's really hard for the traders. Lots of traders do, is having problem to come back because they don't have money to pay the rent. So all I'm raising my hand to ask is, if next week is a genuine hope for the traders to get some grant to sort out the financial so we can kick the market back on road and work and provide some uh, service and facilities for the borough. And uh, the second question of mine is about the bounce back loan, which is I'm finding it, I applied online everything I'm trying to do, not to call, not to take their time, but they had divert me to call them. And when I'm calling them, it's about three days I'm on, on my phone nonstop and they are cutting me off so many times and I have to be on the queue again and I'm not having any answers. Um, can anyone help me with that? Right. Firstly, uh, J Jonathan, could we take up the, the first part of that question and then maybe Kieran and, and James could answer about the bounce back loans. Jonathan, over to you. Okay, thanks, Steve. Uh, yeah, thanks for the question. Um, Mr. Russell might be able to comment more on the sort of uh, the the timings of the process. But um, as we said earlier, we we would hope to uh, be able to say something about the guidelines for the scheme, or, you know, the, the terms of the scheme, uh, and the eligibility by next week. Um, that's not the same as actually um, making payments, because of course that's the point at which we would be inviting people to apply, and then that that would that would take a bit of time to um, to process and get get money out though obviously we'll as, as quickly as we could uh, maybe miss Russell might be able to comment a bit of a feel for how long that might take um. uh, yeah I can try I mean it, it, it depends on how um, the scheme is structured obviously I, I did speak about whether we do a first come first serve or a, um, a, an application period uh, during which we would we would uh, receive the applications and have a cut off at that point obviously first come first serve you've got a chance of getting the money quicker um but uh, there, there are problems with that all i can say to the gentlemen is we do appreciate the uh the need for the money and if, if the scheme as soon as the scheme is up and running we will do absolutely everything we can to process everything as quickly as we can and get the money out to uh the people who are um, eligible for those grants yeah, Ravi, I think that the message really is that, you know, that they, they're trying to clarify the process and they will get the grants out to eligible businesses as soon as possible. I know it's extremely difficult at the moment, um, but there isn't a, a better answer for you. Um, Kieran, James, could you, could you talk about um, the other part of the question? Uh, yeah, um, sorry to hear that, Ravi, I suppose. What we've seen uh, from from the banks is, is some pretty phenomenal uh, response time. So, uh, in, in terms of getting uh, the banks back loan schemes aid, and uh, alluding to James's stats are on of nearly a hundred thousand, which is, is pretty incredible stuff. Do you mind me asking which 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 bank it is that uh, Barclays? And I had requests a call back as well. It's been four days. I haven't received nothing from them. Okay, well maybe James might be best to speak into that one. They are, James, yeah. you're on the spot. Absolutely. Um, I think so. Just to talk more generally, I'd say with the banks are doing um, kind of one, two, three months worth of lending in, in a single day in some cases at the moment. Um, so um, I think, um, again, I'm not sticking up for the bank. I guess I'm trying to set it in context that there is there has been an absolute kind of huge demand uh, for for these products and um, and I guess to echo Kieran's um, um, sentiment um, 
we can only apologize to customers. I genuinely, we are, we are all working as, as fast as we can. Um, in terms of your specific um, request, I could certainly, um, I would certainly be able to see where we are, um, where we are in that, in that, in that callback process. Um, and we can certainly try and get you a, get you a call. I think, um, Ravi, I don't know if you got access to the online banking system. I did everything. I did everything. Online banking. Uh, I got everything. Yeah, everything on my phone, on my tablet, PC. I can manage everything. I got internet. Um, I know they are busy. I understand the situation. Yeah. But you, they have to understand our frustration as well on our side. Three days in a row, nonstop. It, uh, call it 70 hour, 72 hours on the phone, trying to ring them during their opening hours. Mm -hmm. It just said we are heavily busy hourly wait i've been mm -hmm. waiting till 9 30 night when their time or nine o'clock i don't know why they make me wait i thought i will have a chance half an hour extra they're holding me but then the call just cut off without any answers call back again say hours is closed so uh, we feel like we've been left out and i think the barclays should put it's just a suggestion i know you're not involved just a suggestion barclays could have put like oh you are uh, I don't know, 1,000 in the queue. So you know how far are you and if you can wait or call back when you get a, a closer uh, window to wait. Right, I think it's a great idea. And uh, so, Jen, with um, the 1,400 or so customers that we look after um, in the area, I would, I would absolutely love for us to be able to have some sort of facility. And that's and genuinely, I share some of the same frustrations when it comes to that. Um, if you want to send me a, if you want to send me a quick note um, uh, privately, or if Steve, if you can uh, facilitate that, I can certainly see. Um, I can cert I, I can't see where you are in the queue, but I can certainly try and facilitate at least a call back to try and get things moving for you. Yeah, absolutely. Who I need to send a message? Uh, Ravi, you've. Uh, I think you sent me an email earlier, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah, if you just send me um, just a brief outline of what you want and I'll pass it on to James and Super. put you in touch with him. Sounds good to me. Thank you, you very much for your question. Name. Make the business name. That's, that's probably all, all, all I'll need. Thank you. Okay, then. Thank you, James. Okay. So uh, we have a question from uh, Skin of Love. I'm unmuting you. Good afternoon. Hello. Hi. Uh, which we also trade from Tootin Market. We're on a license. Are there any factors that could be hindering any future application for a grant with the type of tenancy, the fact that we are in a building which we are then sharing with other um, retailers and businesses within that space? Uh, thank you for that. Uh, Graham, would you like to answer that? Because uh, Martin... Uh, asked the question and you answered it in the chat. So there are three exclusions, aren't there? Yeah, the, the, um, the only mandatory exclusions from the scheme, and these have been set by the government, are uh, that if you've received a grant, either a small business grant or a retail, hospitality and leisure grant, uh, you can't get a discretionary grant. And that's because um, uh, this, the, the discretionary scheme is trying to plug the gaps in the previous two schemes. And the third, uh, the third one is the if you've uh, applied for the self-employed income support scheme, uh, you can't access the discretionary scheme. Uh, there's a couple of technical ones. You had to be trading on the 11th of March, and you mustn't be insolvent or in administration. But they are the only mandatory exclusions, and the rest of it will depend on um, the criteria that the council sets. It, do it doesn't sound like uh, there'd be a problem with those particular types of uh, issue that you've raised and if you can i continue yes please do with regard to the criteria obviously this is something that you're still waiting to fully establish yeah that, that's correct okay and you've said that there's a time frame in approximately two weeks before any sort of payout would be happening uh that that would be uh probably the earliest possible time we could we could do it yeah we, we We've got to uh, get the scheme set up, approved, and get the applications in. I see. Okay, then. And I believe that the government should be making an announcement. I think it's at the end of next week with regard to the next phase of our, or the next sort of category of businesses re reopening again. 
So at the moment in Tutin Market, I believe takeaway establishments and um, I believe are looking to reopen again. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not uh, in a position to comment on what the government are going to say about uh, the general easing of lockdown and which businesses can and can't uh, reopen, unfortunately. All right. And could I ask James, um, is it um, the, the gentleman from Barclays? Could I ask him a quick question? Of course, yes. Yes. Can you focus? Uh, hi. All right. We don't. Hello. Hi, you're right. This business doesn't bank with Barclays. At the moment, we're going through the final bits of internal paperwork to produce the, uh, to go forward for the C bills loan, which I understand is the loan that is 100% guaranteed by the government. Uh, so, this, so the Seabulls is the 80% one, 80%. the bounce back is, is the bounce back is the 100% guaranteed, which is capped at 50,000. I see, I see, I understand that. Okay, then. And that's what we then put, send the application through initially to, to the British Business Bank first, is it? If I'm correct? So no, so whoever you bank with, you would be approached, um, well, so you would you'd complete the journey as it's laid out through your bank. Um, and then you would then um, certainly at Barclays you you are required to complete a uh, business in difficulty um, attestation form at the outset, um, and that and that ensures you are able that that you are essentially eligible for for the for the scheme. Um, so um, I'm not quite sure on which are you are you down with the bounce back? Are you going down the bounce back route or the or the or the Sybils route? We were route. looking. Sybil's route initially, and that's what we've been building up our business plan, our cash flow forecast, and profit and loss forecast for. But obviously, if we produced a, a, a pretty thorough business plan, then from there on, we could perhaps then speak to whoever relevant and then see exactly which one is appropriate for us. Yeah, so I think so on the Sybil's one, it's it's important to note that the Sybil's um, scheme is a is a credit assessed um, uh, bank facility. Um, as opposed to the bounce back loan scheme, it's, it isn't credit assessed. So um, that's that's probably quite quite um, quite an important point to differentiate from. If 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 you are going down the Sybils route, um, then obviously the um, um, you are not then hindered by the maximum loan amount of fifty thousand. Um, but on the basis um, that it's a credit assessed application as opposed to the bounce back scheme. Um, there are um, there are a couple of extra requirements from you that you would then have to demonstrate to the bank to show that you are able to um, afford the um, afford the loan and uh, and it kind of it is in keeping with what you are doing. So um, as opposed to the bounce back scheme, which is completely self self assessed and self attestated that um, that you qualify, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. Um, um, so yeah, I hope that, I hope that, is that clearer in terms of the bounce back and the Siebel's? The Siebel's is credit assessed, the bounce back isn't credit assessed, um, and I guess on the basis that the Siebel's is credit assessed, um, there are, there is likely to be more, um, dialogue with the bank in terms of, um, them asking you questions and the requirements that, that you ultimately um or the requirements that the bank are trying to get to prove to the government that you that they can lend money uh Kieran, i'm not sure if there's anything else from, from your perspective i'm sure you've got a view yeah i mean i think you pretty much covered it all, it all there uh james i think maybe i don't know if your Siebel's application is, is 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 with funding circle they do require you to do this kind of a bit of the journey on the british business bank the uh, website so that might be be the case but yeah very much echo what james says um uh if you're going through the c-bills it is credit assessed so you will have to make sure all your documentation is in, in place and all your forecasting business plan is is robust for at least um 12 12 months ahead of course cash flow p l um and uh balance sheet uh, but would recommend probably going something more more future forward facing um, yeah, so just yeah, thanks, thanks, Kieran. I think yeah, on that point, um, certainly from the Barclays journey, there isn't any, um, there is no redirection to the British Business Bank. So, um, thank you, thank you for that's obviously I think where the question was coming from. So, thank you for clarifying. 
Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for that question. So um, I think we're coming to the end now. If, uh, if you want to ask a question, please um, raise your hand. Uh, I've put up there <clears throat> on the chat box, you know, who would you like to see at next week's meeting and at future meetings? Um, and one uh, response has been uh, an ex insurance expert. Uh, and Richard Hobson's very kindly put up a helpful uh, post. So Richard, I'm going to unmute you and uh, perhaps you can just talk us through uh, the chat box post you've just made. Yes. Um... Uh, I've spoken to a few of you from here and uh, and others and, and my clients. There's been people who've been very disappointed with insurers' responses. You may have read in the press that the, the regulator is uh, putting a, a, a trial case to the High Court to see how things should should fall on uh, on some of these policies in dispute. And they've asked for people who have been in dispute with their insurers or feel that their insurers should be paying out to submit their their arguments uh, to them. Um, today's the last day for you to submit that um, request to them. It's not a doesn't doesn't mean that you can't kind of be uh, involved in the process down the line. Um, Mishcons are running um, schemes for the hospitality industry, so Mark might be interested in, in speaking to. I did send Mark. Did you get that email, Marcus? And an email about Mishcons um, running a running a uh, a class action for the hospitality industry uh, and there's other ones for people who've got policies with Hiscox so um, don't, don't have to panic to, to rush to get anything in here today but the FCA are trying to just get ahead of it a little bit to, to see if there's um, see how the, the market should respond so if you feel you you, you should be have a payout um, I put the email on there uh, the, the link in the, in the email on there if you want to run it past me give me a shout I'm happy to have to kind of give you a steer whether you've got a um, policy which is grey or whether it's uh, black or white. So happy to happy to help in, in any way possible. Um, one of the points I would say is if you are opening the office, though, um, Corona is very important. Um, to, to to obviously we've got the we've got some concerns about how we go back to work uh, and safe distancing, but. Don't forget the other risks. Don't forget kind of making sure everything else is in place as well. Do uh, before you open anything, make sure you do a walk around of your of your office or your building or your premises to to make sure everything's where it should be. Power up some of the machines if you've got anything which is steam pressure, coffee machines, things like that. Run them through before you actually start start using them as as, as normal because uh, if they've been mothballed for a while, they may just be a bit creaky. So yeah, uh, do. Uh, don't forget, don't forget your other risks um, as well, not just Corona. Thanks, Richard. Marjan's just uh, put up there, how can we contact you? So um, if you could put your details down. And it was actually Marjan that suggested we have an insurance expert uh, on <clears throat> the next business forum. Uh, is there anyone, you know, um, from the FCA or high up in the insurance world that would you feel would like to come on to uh, a business forum like this? Do you want to tell that offline, Stephen? We'll um, we can we can have a talk because it's such a broad church. Um, it depends on what people want to want to hear. So yeah. happy to happy to kind of put some heads together and see if we can find somebody who would uh, uh, be interested. One one area which might be of interest to everybody with more more working from home is something around cyber risks uh, yeah. and digital risks, which is something which we can we can do quite easily. I don't know if that's that's of interest, but some people might not be interested in that. I, I don't know. If, People want to kind of ping me. I'll put my email on there. Ping, people want to ping me ideas as well about who, um, what kind of areas they want to want to hear about. I'm happy to have a chat. Okay, uh, lovely. So I think I can't see any more hands raised. Uh, just the last opportunity for any of our speakers and panel to say uh, last few words in closing. Did you want to? Uh, anyone want to make comments? Steve, if I could share uh, my experience. Um, on the um, loan schemes, um, we've seen um, small business owners um, getting the money from the business uh, for the bounce back loan scheme and then transferring the money straight away into their personal bank accounts. Please, please don't do this. Um, it comes with the huge tax consequences for the following year. 
any money you take out from your company will be categorized either as dividends or loan to yourself. Of course, depending on whether the business has made profit in the year or not, you could be looking at personal tax liabilities in the region of 32.5% next year, or even a corporation tax liability for your company um, next year. So please uh, consider this loan is for the business. Uh, you as the director shareholders are totally separate legal entity. This money is not for your personal use. Thank you. That's really useful, Zaib. Uh, thank you very much for that. Any more, anyone else like to say anything before we close? That's, that's lovely. So um, thank you to our speakers and thank you to all of those that attended. I will um, just edit out all of the pauses and send this video out tomorrow. Um, please share it with any other businesses that didn't get a chance to, to listen to some of the, the advice given. Um, I will also circulate the chat box. So it's the last opportunity now to um, put up any offers on there or your contact details or ask for help. If anyone has any suggestions or anyone they'd particularly like to see as an expert uh, on these business forums, please let me know and we'll try and, and invite them to, to come in and share their views with you. Um, but for now, uh, uh, thank you very much for attending.